Welcome back to the channel guys, Mopar Life, and yes, I've got the Mopar, but guess what else I got? I haven't shared with anybody on my channel yet, is I bought this for my son. This is an old retired Ford Police Interceptor Crown Victoria, and as you saw by the title, it needs some ABS work, and a lot of Crown Vic guys uh, are driving around with ABS lights on, so I'm going to show how to fix it. If you're a Mopar guy and this doesn't interest you, hey, don't worry, I'll be back with some more Mopar stuff. But I want to help my Ford Crown Vic guys with how to fix this pesky ABS. So stick around. Hey there, Crown Victoria enthusiasts. This is my son's 2010 Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. We got this a couple months ago uh, as his first car so we can uh, do a couple things to it, fix it up a little bit. He learned how to drive it and then be on the road. Uh, but one thing I noticed while we were going over what we need to do to kind of recondition this old Vic is it has an ABS module that's out. And something very important to this dad is having the ability to stop uh, with a functioning ABS system. Well, I did a little research on it, and it turns out that's a very common failure on these old Crown Victorias. And I got on some uh, Facebook websites that I'm a member of that I've joined up now that I'm a Crown Vic owner. And turns out there are a lot of Crown Vic owners that have this issue, and a lot of owners say, yeah, just leave it. I don't worry about it. And I was like, that's interesting because that seems like a pretty important thing you'd want to have on your car, especially if you're a concerned dad and your 16-year-old is going to be driving it. Uh, you want all the safety features to work. Well, the reason that a lot of people leave it, the part is very expensive, over $500. So I did a little more research and found a place called upfix.com that says they can rebuild these. Um, and it's super easy. All I got to do is take it out and mail it into them and they fix it and I bring it back. One thing I noticed if I bought a new one or even a used one off of uh, an auction site or something, I would still have to install it and then have it programmed back to the car, I guess, to make the VIN match the VIN on this car, put the VIN in the ECU or whatever the case is. But anyway, if you send yours off to get it rebuilt, uh, then you don't have to have a program because all that information is still stored on the computer and you put it back in. So I'm going to try this upfix.com and see how they do. I'm going to show you how to do the process and then send it off and get it back and install it. And we'll see what happens when we get it back, uh, if it works and if it's worth the money versus having to buy a brand new one or even worse, just never fixing it all on the car. Okay, so I'm in the car right now, and it's running, and let's look. We've got the infamous brake light and ABS light on, on the dash. And you can see it's been on for a while because the previous owner actually uh, had some tape over it. He just blocked it out with a, with a piece of tape or something sticky so he didn't have to look at it. But we're not going to do that because we want it to be safe. So I'm going to plug the scanner in. Let's see what the scanner shows. Okay, it's showing B1596 and B1342. So we'll remember that, uh, but it's showing uh, internal fault on the ECU and the uh, continuous memory. So it looks like that ABS module is just not good. Gonna have to have it rebuilt. So let me walk you through the steps on how to remove it from the car. Okay, so before you get started, here's some tools that you may need. Here's the ones I used uh, to get the job done. is a uh, regular size ratchet uh, wrench and a small ratchet, and then a deep socket 10 millimeter, a regular 10 millimeter, and uh, a small extension and a large extension. And then I used a uh, ratcheting screwdriver with a 532nd socket on it. Here's the little bolts that you're going to be taking out, and it looks like it's a reverse Torx, I guess, or uh, something. But And I didn't have that uh, particular tool, but I found that the 532nd socket fits on there just fine, enough to pull it out, no problem. That's what I'll use to put it back in. And here's what we're after right here is the ABS module. And this is what we're pulling off of the car to get sent in to upfix.com so they can rebuild it and we can get our ABS back without having to pay uh, lots of money for a brand new one. Okay, let's go under the hood and we're going to go to the driver's side 
and here's your ABS module and it has a plug plugged into it. So you're gonna grab this lever and pull it up and while you're doing that, pull backwards on it and it'll just pop right off. And then you're left with the ABS module that is still attached to the ABS pump. So to get to that, let's just use our 10 millimeter screws and there's gonna be, or socket, there's gonna be three bolts holding on the air box and this one plug right here. So just undo all of those and then we can grab our air box and lift it up and just move it out of the way. We're not disconnecting anything else. Just picking that up, moving it out of the way so we can access it. And now you can see there's the pump. So you'll see there's two 10 millimeter bolts that's holding the pump onto this frame rail down there. Uh, so just take your socket and loosen those up and then you can move the module around and the pump around and you're not going to break anything just don't go crazy with it but it gives you a little bit of uh, leverage and you notice on top there's two of those bolts i showed you earlier and i've already loosened that top one but there's two on top and then two matching on the bottom so you loosen all those up there's only four of them on my car and then gently pull out the abs module and there it is it's free from the car now i think on the older crown victoria models there may be six screws but uh and phillips head but mine only has four now the good part about this is you can still drive the car with the abs module out so i wrapped a plastic bag around it just to make sure no extra dirt or anything got in there in case i needed to use the car uh while the abs module was down and as it turns out i did so it was perfect so i went ahead and put the air box back in and plugged it back in and just three little bolts and made it solid. Then I went to order my part. So then I went online to upfix.com. Now I found this doing a Google search on how I could possibly fix this ABS model for less than $540. Uh, I put my information in Ford Crown Victoria, put the year model, mine's a 2010, hit filter, and then it shows all of the other components that they fix, including the ABS module, which is what I clicked on because that's what I'm after here. And then if you scroll down, there's a section that tells you uh, what issue are you having with yours? Well, as we saw earlier, I had a couple of codes on there, the B1342, the 156, and I also clicked no communication with the ABS module. And then it said, place your order. And since I was a first time user and I'd signed up with my email, they gave me a discount code, which I put in and boom, for $200, Thank you, Sean. Send your part in for repair. So after my order, I immediately get emailed a shipping label to put on my box and ship it out. And everything is included in the cost. All I had to do was drop it off at the UPS store and wait for it to come back. And the level of customer service I got from this upfix is unbelievable. They will send you an email when the box arrives, when it's on the text bench getting tested, and everything in between when they send it back, when it arrives at your house. And I even got a call personally from Robert to tell me about the status of my ABS, because unfortunately with mine, we had a little bit of an issue, but I'll go into that in just a minute. But next thing I know, I get an email that says it's back and it's on my front porch. So then I go to open it and see what's in the box. And they give me a cool little refrigerator magnet and a sticker and uh, a little pamphlet and then i had my abs module now i had two abs modules because unfortunately in my situation my abs module that was on there was damaged to the point where it was not able to be repaired as soon as they realized that mine was not able to be fixed uh, robert called me personally to tell me what was going on and said hey we got a hold of another abs module for you we're going to fix that test it it's perfect and the only difference is i'm going to have to have it reprogrammed uh, to match my VIN number since I wasn't able to use the original. Like they said, in most cases, you can use the original, but in mine, it was just unfortunate. So to put it back, we're just gonna do the reverse steps. I took my air box back up and moved it out of the way and took my bag off and uh, no damage or anything from driving it around. Then I peeled the tape off the module they sent back to me and carefully slipped it right back on. It actually goes on really easily and uh, just pushed it right up against where it goes and then got my four screws and put it back in there and like i said on some of the earlier models it's uh phillips head screws i'm pretty sure but for the bottom ones that's what i use the screwdriver for the ratcheting screwdriver and then for the top ones i use the actual tiny little ratchet to uh, put all the screws back in but they went in very easily no problem then with the abs module back in place i just pushed this back on the frame rail and retighten those two uh, 10 millimeter bolts that holds it nice and firm in place. Then put the air box back in with those three 10 millimeter bolts and clip the sensor back in. And basically 
all I have left is to plug it back in. That's the last step that we got to do. Uh, and that's a proud moment right there because uh, then you're done. So just get your harness and kind of butt it up against the ABS module. And then once it's in position, you just slide this little lever down and kind of push it on and it locks itself in place. So like I said before, in most cases, you get your ABS module back from Upfix, you throw it in there and you're good to go. But unfortunately, mine couldn't be rebuilt, but Upfix through that awesome customer service, I'm telling you, I can't say enough about these guys. They called me on the phone. Uh, to discuss my situation anyway got me a unit rebuilt i put it in the car myself just like i showed you earlier and uh one extra step that i had to do that most don't is go get it reprogrammed um at the ford dealership which i did and here's the results let's see i'm gonna turn the car on and you can see the brake light and abs light they went out it's gone my abs is back to working i didn't have to pay 540 dollars for a new one up fix got it fixed and i did all the work taking it out and putting it in and shipping it off so uh if you want yours done that's how you do it guys i know a lot of you have the uh dash light on your abs isn't working and try this out it's not very expensive and you can get your old crown vic back with all the safety features uh, that it had when it left the factory